Elsewhere on the Federal Reserve, the former New York Fed President Bill Dudley in a new Bloomberg Opinion column writing this. I've been too pessimistic about the risks of a so-called hard landing for the US economy over the past few years. Although most of my conclusions that led to that view were correct, such an outcome remains very much in doubt. Bill joins us now for more. Bill, welcome back to the program, sir. It's been quite a journey for you, an intellectual journey over the years so far. I want to go through a couple of headlines and you help me understand why you've changed your thinking somewhat. It was only back earlier this summer where you said, I changed my mind, the Fed needs to cut rates now. Before the Federal Reserve meeting last time around, you said they need to go big now. I think they will. They did. This morning, my hard landing forecast turned out to be wrong. Bill, just walk us through how you're thinking about things currently and what kind of policy this backdrop needs? Well, my original view was that the uh, Fed would be late to tighten monetary policy. Check. Uh, as a consequence, inflation would go up and the labor market would uh, get very tight. Check. Uh, then the Federal Reserve would have to tighten monetary policy a lot. Check. And the unemployment rate would have to go up uh, at least a half a percentage point, trigger the SOM rule. Check. But the SOM rule trigger doesn't seem like it's leading to recession. If you look at what at the GDP numbers, they've been very firm lately. Uh, second quarter is three percent. Third quarter is tracking two and a half percent. So even though I had the story right, <laughs> it doesn't look like the conclusion is going to pan out. Uh, you know, it's too soon to say for sure. Uh, that's why the labor market has so much uh, attention focused on it. And I thought what was interesting, the summary of economic projections at the last FOMC meeting, uh, they actually, in, the, in their summary of economic projections, they actually think that the downside risks uh, to the labor market are actually greater now than the upside risks to the inflation. So they're worried about the exact same thing. And that's why you know, tomorrow's labor market report is so important. Uh, if the labor market really starts to deteriorate, uh, then I think the soft landing story will start to come into question. And that's why the Fed cut 50 basis points uh, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. I think a lot of people, Bill, share uh, your journey in terms of changing views and not understanding which models are actually accurate this time around. What in your analysis uh, makes you think that this time is different and that some of the classic indicators that traditionally have foretold recession no longer work? I think two things are different. Number one, you had all these fiscal transfers during the pandemic to businesses and households. So business and household balance sheets are in better shape than they typically are late in the business cycle. Uh, you know, for example, look at debt service costs for the household sector. It's still pretty low because people locked in very low mortgage rates during the during, during the pandemic. Uh, second thing I think is different is that financial conditions have eased a lot even before the Federal Reserve cut rates. So financial conditions sir, were at the most tightest about uh, about a year ago. And since then, they've eased a lot. Stock market up, bond yields down, credit spreads tighter. And so even though monetary policy is tight, when you look at the level of short-term rates, financial conditions have eased a lot, and that's supporting economic activity. What's to say we're landing at all, Bill? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I think, you know, the Fed would like the economy to grow, you know, two, two and a half percent, keep the unemployment rate right where it is. Um, and the third quarter, it looks like it's shaping up that way. But keeping on that very, you know, that nice edge, growth not strong enough to cause a resurgence of inflation, not weak enough to lead to the kind of deterioration in the labor market that would lead to a recession, that's going to be tough to keep on that nice edge. Bill, what are you expecting for tomorrow? I think it'll be a you know, decent payroll employment report. I mean, I think the estimates are around 140,000. Um, that seems like a reasonable estimate. We have to remember, though, the uh, payroll employment has a you know big standard error around those estimates. So you could get something like 80,000, or you get something like 200,000, and it really wouldn't uh, tell you for sure that the economy has actually changed momentum. Bill, how difficult is that November 7th meeting going to be? considering how messy the data might be, considering we might not have an outcome from the election. Can you think of a time like this one that they're going into in the next month? Well, the particular awkwardness is that the, there will be another payroll employment report during the blackout period before, right before the FOMC meeting. I look, I think that the, the most of the I, momentum is for 25 basis points at this point. Uh, Powell basically foreshadowed that in his speech. Uh, the fact that you had all these people in the summary of economic projections that only had one more rate cut in their forecast after the last meeting also tells you that it's probably not going to be 50. So I think, I think you know, the, the basic story is still intact. Risk to 
the labor market are greater than the risk to inflation. Monetary policy is tight. We're still quite a ways from, from, from neutral. So 25 basis points is the most likely scenario in my, in my view at this point. Bill, we had Adam uh, posted on earlier from the Peterson Institute who said that the Fed should uh, be vocal about the fact that they're considering the deficit and potential tariffs as a potential inflationary pressure heading into 2025 and a reason to cut less. What do you make of that? Not necessarily the Fed weighing in on that particular issue, but being more cautious ahead of next year because of it. Uh, in my experience, the Fed doesn't, you know, make for, you know set policy today on things that might or might not happen in the future. I think they wait to those things either materialize or not. Uh, and so I think that the idea that the Fed wouldn't ease because they're worried that the election could result in a certain uh, outcome that would lead to higher tariffs and higher inflation, I don't think the Federal Reserve would hold off because of that. Bill Dudley, appreciate it, sir. As always, the former New York Fed president, Bill Dudley, there on his latest piece, How My Hard Landing Forecast Turned Out to Be Wrong. You can find that on Bloomberg Opinion.